Three, two, one, sink. Sink. Close enough. <laughs> I feel like we've just established like a super dimensional connection yeah, by saying sink. I feel, I feel closer time. to you. <laughs> what's up? We are listen, you know what? Yo, what's up, anime fans? We're starting now. You listen, yes, you know you know that feeling when you, you really want something and then you get it and you're like, Well, it's kinda what I wanted. But, uh, you know, I mean, like, it could have been better. It's not exactly what I was thinking, but, you know, we'll take it. We'll take it. If it's better, it's better than nothing. You know that? You know that feeling, Yish? Yeah, I feel. So, we're watching... We're... We're... we're, we're fuck! <laughs> well, we're a little out of... Start over. Practice. Yeah, start over. Hi, welcome to the Index 3 podcast. How's it going? <laughs> we watched so Index I... 3. Yeah, like... Four months ago. <laughs> Four months ago. It was a bit. It's when been a while it trying to set up this podcast, but we're, but we're here. We're live. We're ready. We're all looped up. Yeah. But uh, so I don't know about that. We're we're gonna do this podcast two wit and like we're gonna split it in half somewhat, doing a non spoiler section and then a spoiler section at the end. And uh, okay, it's, I say split up in half, but like it might not. It probably won't end up being half, depending on how many okay. spoiler things we have to say. That's the first I've heard of it, but okay. Wow. I'm trying to... I've, I've always struggled with trying to do, like, spoilers, because, like, what people consider spoilers are different things. We're going to go vague yeah. over thoughts of the show, and then we're going to talk about specific things we liked or did not like. So, okay. background is the fudging Index uh, 1. I can't think it came out in 2008. Wasn't it that 2008? I think 2008 or nine. But it was super great, uh, and was it was underrated for a really long time. I feel like it's still underrated. It's always been like somewhat popular in Japan, but definitely like in the West, it was not like a. It was one of those. It's like one of those like weird like light novel adaptations. Like before light novels all just became like isekai. That was like weird like grim dark things. I wouldn't call Index grim dark per se, but it has it has its dark grim moments. Like people like get their arms cut off and whatnot. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like the first two arcs or was it three three arcs of index are pretty dark yeah you know it does like they so like, like it goes like kind back of weird. and forth on the dark because like, at some points it's like well oh yeah here's here's index she's gonna her memory like disappears after like one second and it's this horrible tragic backstory and hey there's somebody like died over here and then next arc it's just like weird goofy fan service <laughs> but like it, do, it does do it properly. This is not a general review yeah. of Index. Index came out, it was great. Railgun, and then it had a spin-off Railgun, and then both of those had a sequel. And then, like, nothing. Railgun S, S the sequel to Railgun, was, like, 2012, I think? I think it was 13. Yeah, it was, like, 12 or 13. I think it was 12 into 13. But Does Index it, 2 came out in 11, I think. It was, like, 13 yeah, or 14. 10. Anyway, it's been a while, and, like, the series, like, went silent like absolutely dead silent and we were just like we want the index three because index two index two was really good like index one was mm -hmm. pretty good but index two like it it, it ended kind of like on a cliffhanger because index two the very ending of index two was like hey world war three is gonna happen and then we're and then we're like when 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 <laughs> So we're all sitting, and then finally they announced, they're like, oh yeah, by the way, the whole Index series coming back. We got Index 3, we got Accelerator, we got Railgun 3, and I'm like, oh, okay, we'll take it. <laughs> and then... Nice. And then Index started, and, okay, listen, yes, 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 yes. What are, you, what are your general thoughts on the show? How did, how did you enjoy it? Um, I thought the overall story was pretty good, um, but way too fast. Fast is yeah, fast is a word. I mean, when the show start, when the show was airing, people constantly gave it crap for like, for like, pacing issues. People like they, people just basically said that they said it was fast. They said it had bad pacing, but it's like I'm not saying that's not true. It's something like more than that because like, when we say I think part of it was by design because like the second arc, the battle royale arc is kind of supposed to be like. Oh, there's so much shit thrown at you at once. Yeah. So but I I've... thought that was kind of cool, but at the same time, there wasn't enough development with all the other underground organizations. Yeah. What? There was. It was just mostly like it was a little bit of everything. Like the animation was a little janky at points. The directing wasn't like all there. It was very like. 
It felt like it had a low budget. I'm not gonna say low budget though, because like, I feel like it had a normal budget, but from one, but like, it felt like they didn't have a lot of time to devote to it. Maybe that was it. Like, possibly. I thought visually it looked better than Index Two because I watched. It, it looked better I than Index, Index Two. Yeah, I rewatched Index Two and then I started watching Index Three, and I thought it looked quite a bit better. What do you mean look better? Because I I think Index Two. I don't know. It just kind of. I just kind of it just kind of had a shinier feel to it. I don't know. Yeah, there were some episodes that were like like. There were some episodes that were that did definitely like look okay, but like there was a lot of like weird like CG and a lot of like weird like stilted animation. But the definitely, okay. I thought I like the environments and like the backgrounds and whatnot in Index Three. There's like a there's like a part like near the end. I'm specifically thinking about when I said when I say awkward animation where like accelerator's like sitting on the edge of a bed and then he just kind of like lifts up and it's we kind of weird. Mm. Okay. See, I'm not good at de- determining. I'm not artistic. <laughs> yeah, that was like it was a weird experience watching Index Three because it was like. It was this thing. I'm like, yes, I finally got it. We finally, it's it's in our hands. We, we're, I'm watching Index Three, and and it is good. Like, it's people like rate this as like a worst thing in history. This is like, you know, they send people death threats and whatnot. And I'm like, it's. I have seen. I I understand why people would feel that way. But like for me, like, no matter like how weird and jank the like production aspects of it is. It's still, like, Index at its core. Like, cool things still happen. You still got Toma beating up people. You still got Accelerator being cool. You still got a great soundtrack. You know yeah. what I mean, Yish? Yeah. But, like, there is definitely something about it where it's... I'm like, this could this could be more, like, the things that happen should be crazy. We'll get more into that in the spoiler section. But, like, the things yeah. that happen in the show should be more impactful i should be like whoa what's going on whoa but like it's like oh who's that oh okay they they showed up oh that's cool oh whoa whoa. it's like yeah and i think that's where like the pacing issue comes from yeah i think that's part of the pacing issue i don't know it's just it feels it definitely feels like there's something missing yeah like and I, what I when I was I was like researching this because I'm like crazy and people are always like blaming the director, but it's like it is the same director. Like I was trying to like figure out like there because like a lot of like anime productions like really like super behind the scenes and there's like rumors floating around like oh they only had like a week to work on it or like they didn't have any budget, but like like the only source thing I could find was the like staff list, and I was looking for the staff list and like seeing what changed between Index One and Two and Three. And the main thing was uh, the script composition, uh, which okay. were, like, basically, from what I understand, is, like, the people who put together, like, what the script of the show of what's going to happen in each episode. And so okay. they're in charge of, like, pacing and whatnot, and those are completely different. So that, like, makes slightly more sense. Mm-hmm. Because people, like, would just easily like to blame the director, but, like, the director, like, you really don't know, like... The director basically, like, approves or disapproves ideas that are put on his desk. Like, the director could just do nothing and just approve everything and, like, uh, just let, have it entirely be up, be up to the rest of the staff. Or they could be, like, super in it. But, like, in this case, mm-hmm. I do want to say that it was the script writers. Because the script writers are, like, some, like, people who have done a couple of things. I'm not trying to, like, bash these people and be, like, super <laughs> mean to them. Being, like, they're the reasons that this show sucks. But it is, like, a different script writer. Okay. Which yeah, does that's, make... That's good to know. Which does lead to the idea that, like, they just didn't have the resources. Because, like, what happened to the old script writers from Index 1 and 2? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just... I don't know. F- things don't feel... The cool things happen, but they just don't feel significant. Yeah, it's definitely, it is definitely a pacing issue. I didn't want to admit that because, like, if you look at, like, the how much, how many light novel chapters or, like, volumes were per episode in Index 1 and 2, it's roughly the same. It was, like, one volume was, yeah. like, three or four episodes. And if you look in uh, Index 3, it's, like, about the same. But things do just happen way too quick. So it's not necessarily that it's too fast it's just that things don't get properly explained like i, w- I was like quickly like rewatching another episode what is this cat fur is flying around 
It's like I'm the <laughs> things flying around my room. Anyway, speaking of cat, where did the cat go from index? The cat. <laughs> oh yeah, cat Sphinx. <laughs> Sphinx. It's not Sphinx. Sphinx. Wait. Is it really Sphinx? I don't know. It's the, it's the cat. It's like the big Egyptian cat thing that we can't pronounce. Yeah, Sphinx. Sphinx. But okay. uh, <laughs> there was also a dog. What happened to the dog? There was like a in. Oh, uh, there was a dog. There was a no. There was a cat named a dog, and I don't remember how to do it. I think it got murdered in Railgun. Anyway, we're getting off okay. topic. Yeah, Spoilers. like the main thing I was noticing is that there was like no establishing shots in a scene. So like scenes just kind of happen as fast as they happen, which is I think what leads to people saying that this was rushed. Like there was like a scene, and it's like what building are we in? And it doesn't like it's you have to like make. You have to just kind of guess, like, based on what's yeah. happening in the story. You have to pay really close attention to the story to figure out what's going on. And it's not yeah. that's not usually needed in an anime, you know what I mean? Yeah, and if you watched it one week at a time like I did, it's <laughs> even harder. <laughs> and then if you haven't watched it for four months, <laughs> you forget. Yeah, but, like, it's not like everything in the show was just, like, a wash, right? Because it's, like... Because I've seen, I've had shows. Yeah, definitely like that. things happened. Because I can See, point out a lot of like cool moments of the show that were cool, but like, and there were definitely things in the story that happened. It's like things happened, and they were, I don't know, it's story. The story advanced, and you can point to each way of how it advanced, but like, it's like, kind of, why, <laughs> why. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, because I feel like, okay, here's, I'm sorry, I'm like sketch shopping around because I'm not too sure what to put in the spoiler section or not, but uh, is there anything we wanted to say about the general production? Should we just start going right into spoilers? Because we're having a lot of difficulty just talking about the show without actually talking about the show, you know what I mean? Sure, let's go to spoilers. Uh, I just want to, I'm looking... Yeah, uh, the the composition, the the main composition writer that was missing, uh, that did all the scene series composition for one and two was uh, Akahoshi Masano. Masano. Uh, so like, what the fudge? Come back! Come back! <laughs> Come back! And it's not like the series competition guys are like completely new. Like some of them like did like episodes here and there. Like I see like somebody like one of the guys like did the worked on the movie and a couple episodes of Railgun S. <laughs> but, uh, okay. yeah, I don't know. Again, it, it, there could be several thousand factors. It could be, like, they didn't know what they were doing or they didn't have enough time or, like, they didn't have, like, enough communication. Who knows what the working conditions were, okay? <laughs> they were they were worked to death. They were... They, yeah. didn't, they weren't being paid. Yeah, I mean, that's those are all, like, possibilities. The, the only thing we really know about the anime... Is, uh, industry is what Shirobako taught us. And, uh, I still have yet to see Shirobako in its entirety, so we, we need, we need to do some research. We need to, we gotta, we gotta go in there. But, uh, who knows, who knows, man? But it wasn't a bad show, right? Where we say all these yeah. things, it wasn't a bad, it, it was, it was, at its core, it was some classic index, like, beating up some bad guys. Uh, Toma's gotta punch them, he, all these crazy like factions fighting together mm. and yeah uh, it was basically to the core it was index uh, hello I needed, I needed a drink i was talking too much <clears throat> okay but yeah it was it was cool it was index it is if you wanted index three i feel like people say like oh this is only for like the light novel readers who already know what's going on but like I feel like this is more just, like... What I feel is that they wanted to, like... they Okay, so they brought Index back, right? It was in, on, like, a hiatus, and then they come back with Index 3, Accelerator, and Railgun 3, right? Yeah. So, obviously, they have plans for this series, but it just seems like those plans... Like, the, like Index 3 was a low priority. And my theory mm. is, is that Index is technically not a series that is ongoing, because... They switched over to New Testament, <laughs> right? Yeah, but they 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 had a cliffhanger at the end of the show. Yeah, which like, I'm assuming. Yeah, this is which this is, is gonna keep going. 
Yeah, which I I mean, like, it's not like it, this is done forever. It's like, okay, here's Index 3, we're moving on. I think they just want to get to New Testament, because New Testament is what is currently being sold, and that would be, like, the best monetary decision. Okay. Yeah. Instead of being like, hey, look at this Index show that doesn't exist that doesn't exist anymore. We're not making new volumes. Look at this Index New Testament. Again, a stretch, but that's just, like, my theory for why... Index 3 felt like a back burner project, like a low priority, like, make of work, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's kind of strange to be the, the main series, and then you're releasing two spin-off series, but the main series is the back burner. Yeah, I mean, neither of us have watched The Accelerator yet, but uh, okay. I've, seen, I've seen a couple of things from Accelerator, and it looks, it looks good. Like, it definitely, like, the production quality is definitely a lot looks to be a lot higher than index three so i want to say my theory is confirmed if 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 in a year or two we have index uh new testament season one come out and it's like back to index one and two level of quality then my theory will be confirmed okay <laughs> because well, like you gotta wait a long time for that <laughs> I don't know. They like Index Three just happened like last winter, and then Accelerator is airing now, and apparently Railgun is gonna air next winter. So that's like three in the span okay. of like a year and a half. Yeah. So, so that I mean, if you want, if you like Index, then you've got it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that there, so, there are definitely like different teams working on it. So maybe like they poured all their efforts into working on the Railgun thing. Yeah, I don't know. Some people like Railgun more. Um, I guess it's just more action. So maybe that's it's more suit for this medium uh, in, in terms of an a I wouldn't say anime. that. I, f I feel like Index and... Again, Index 1 and 2 are definitely better than Index 3. Right? Yeah. Do you say that? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I would say that. Definitely 2 is better. I, I, I haven't watched 1 in a while. 1 had a lot of cool shots. Like, 1, like... Like I was rewatching it like semi recently. I have a good memory. I've I rewatch like clips and stuff all the time. But like it had a lot of like cool shots. Like when they were explaining how like Index's memory worked about how she can memorize the shape and color of every single raindrop and like everything slowed down to show the color and detail of every last raindrop. And I'm okay. like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it had a lot. And of I remember, direction. I remember in the sisters arc, like it was pretty dark once you once toma encountered the first dead sister yeah yeah yeah. he just encountered her in a dark alleyway and i think creepy music played so that was pretty cool and also railgun uh had a huge like a lot of like impact and uh i'm it's i'm i'm struggling to find a better word other than just budget like the reason people just say oh this show had good budget is because there's not a whole lot there's not a whole lot of words to describe like the combination of like good pacing and then good writing and good animation and good directing to all like lead into really impactful scenes but it just it just yeah. takes a lot of work is basically what it is yeah i think just the main issue is it's less impactful i think less impactful is definitely like i was watching okay we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into the we're gonna get into the spoiler sections are you guys ready wait before before we do that have you read the light novels uh no i've read a couple of pages okay. i'm not at, listen okay. I'm not, I know everyone's like, hey, if you don't like Index 3, read the novels, but I'm like, the reason that I'm an Index fan is because I watched the anime, and I like it as an anime. So, like, yeah. I could read the novels and enjoy them separately, but it would be a completely different experience than just watching the, the show, you know? Yeah, and also, if you want to buy the Index Light novels, the first volume is $14, and there's, like, a million volumes. Yeah, I own the first <laughs> So that's a lot of money. I own the a first three volumes. Don't worry about okay. it, dude. But it's been a while. They're okay. probably on sale. But anyway, uh, yeah, oh, especially yeah, especially, especially like the backgrounds in Academy in uh, the anime, like Academy City as a location is hella cool. There's like windmills and like giant skyscrapers and like just cool ass crap everywhere. Yeah, you can't really get that in a light novel. Yeah, I mean you get the occasional like background shot, but like. I don't know. But yeah, that's another thing. They didn't really there wasn't really much of Academy City in this show. They traveled a lot. We're gonna we're gonna get into yeah. spoilers. We're gonna get into spoilers. Are you ready? Okay. Any any I'm ready. non spoiler I think what I would give index I would give index like a strong seven to a light eight. Um, okay. Where my previous index one and two are like 
strong nines like tens. Like one of my favorite okay. series. Yeah. What did you give it? I think I gave it a nine, but I don't know. I don't remember why. <laughs> probably, probably well, just because it was Index. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> to be it, de- it definitely piggybacks on the fact that Index One and Two are like one of my favorite shows, and like this is still has parts of that, just not all of it, you know. Yeah, it probably deserves an eight. I would say. Uh, okay, spoiler times. You ready for this one? Let's go. Uh, Toma dies. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe it. No. <laughs> uh... I was reading online that the light novel actually made it seem like he died. I think it was. I think I remember because I remember when the original like that part of the light novel came out, and I so- only somewhat care about spoilers. Like I think it was like everyone was mad because he died. <laughs> <laughs> but then New Testament came out and he was like okay and I'm like okay. <laughs> All right. But in the in the show like it definitely like he looks like he dies and then they have like an after credit scene, an Avengers after credit scene where they show up on the boat and they're like hey what's up? How's it going? You want to you want to help? <laughs> I live yeah. bitch. Yeah. Can I say for that last episode? That last episode was like on the level of quality of Index 1 and 2. It was a weird, jarring experience going from the second to last episode to the last episode, where everything was like, whoa, everything's moving, and it's all, it was like, cool, and everything's like, whoa, what's going on? It's like they put all their eggs in that one basket, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, so that was that was when, like, Accelerator was singing, right? <laughs> yeah, during, like, Accelerator's, like, huge singing and thing. Then, and then he turned into an angel. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was really cool. That was like definitely like a super memorable scene, and the show does have memorable scenes outside of that. Like, the uh, the episode I just uh, rewatched uh, just to brush up my feeling of what the show is like was the uh, the end of the uh, like battle royale arc. Was it called? Yeah. By the way, are you still recording? I hope so. <laughs> I yeah, hope. I'm recording. Okay, sick. But anyway, the end of the Battle Royale, Royale arc was kind of, like, crazy. It was It's a good example. I rewatch it because it's a good example of what the problem and the cool thing about the show is. Because a lot of cool things happen in the show, like the fight between Accelerator and, uh... F, what was his name, dude? The other... Dark the, Matter? Uh, Kakine. Uh, the, okay. like, second-ranked level 5, who they've talked yeah. about in secret. And, like, that was, like... The fight was awesome. The fight was great. Right, like he was yeah. like, like they were like, okay, hey, I've uh, fucking Alistair called Accelerator. And was like, hey, I have some information of someone trying to kill your friend, and he's like, okay, I'll go save him. And it was, and then he tried to kill Last Order, and then they started fighting. Remember that? Right. Yeah. Okay, and that was like one of the moments where I'm like, okay, the whole sh- episode was kind of flat. Like, okay, somebody a major death happened to that episode, and I still felt uh, that entire episode was flat. Remember the. The girl yeah, who could the make died. the girl who could make things explode, because I'm like that's cool. Like that's one of the reasons I like Index as like a multi-series series is because like you wouldn't if you just watched Index one, two, and three, you wouldn't know who Mugino and the exploding lolly are. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's it seems like that was supposed to be a really dark moment, but it was just kind of like, yeah, I killed her. <laughs> yeah, it was, but it was kind of like. It wasn't. It's, well, it was definitely one of those moments where I'm like, yeah, that I feel like this should be more impactful. But like the fact that it's less impactful is kind of also cool because it's like, well, she just killed her. She just killed her best friend. Like it was no big deal, and the show didn't even yeah. acknowledge that it was a big deal. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. well, excuse but, me. But to go on your point that you like watching the three at the same time or concurrently. I don't know if that's how it was meant to be watched because the light novels, I think all the light novels came out before the first edition of Railgun came out. I don't know cuz like the manga. I remember when I so, watched the I remember um when I watched I watched the entirety of Index like twice, not including Index 3. And I remember the first time there was like a there was like half of an arc in Index 2 that doesn't make sense unless you've seen Railgun S, but Railgun S came out, the anime came out after Index, so it only made sense are on you, the rewatch. Are you talking about the the space one? Yeah, the space one. Like, they talk about, like, Kurokos and stuff. Yeah, but I think I, it seems like that was, 
the, the railgun one was just to provide backstory of to why the satellite was destroyed. So I don't know yeah. if it was. But they do specifically necessary. like several times throughout that arc. They specify, oh yeah, we wanted to do this, but the satellite was destroyed, and this place yeah. is in this state. But they showed the satellite getting. De- they showed the satellite destroyed at like the first episode. But they never explained what the sat- how why the satellite was important until Railgun S, where Misaka went to try to destroy to shut down the satellite and she couldn't because it was destroyed and it was just running like on automatic hmm. anyway okay. we're gonna but off didn't topic. she didn't she destroy the satellite though she did destroy the satellite no like the first scene of index one she destroyed the satellite oh okay but yeah but oh, it was like by okay. accident she didn't try to do it she, she just shot off a rail gun and it blasted got reflected off into space or something we're getting off topic the, yeah, but yeah, like, the, the the exploding lolly died, and, like, the show didn't treat it like anything at all, but, like, that's kind of why it was cool, because it was like, oh, shit, she, she just killed her best friend, and they moved on, it wasn't anything special, and then she, like, she got, like, hella straight up murdered. <laughs> yeah. Like, we find out later that she's not dead, but, like, she's missing an eye and a couple of limbs, and I'm like, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. I've... It's definitely like that that flex where like oh yeah I understand I get more enjoyment out of this because I'm a I'm a hella super nerd who watched the spinoff series, right? Yeah. Because if you didn't but watch the spinoff, I thought hmm? I I thought the what, what was the blonde kid's name? I forget. Oh the the third protagonist. Yeah, the third protagonist. Uh, fight. But I thought Hamazura. <laughs> Hamazura. Okay, yeah, Hamazura. I thought the fight with him. And Mugino was pretty cool. All the fights between him and Mugino were cool. Like, remember that they were like in like near like right before they went to like Russia. Like they they were fighting like in a jet terminal or like a place where they keep jets, and she like exploded her. I think that's yeah, what she that lost. Was... Yeah, she she was missing an eye before that, but then after that she was missing like her legs. Yeah. And then she made them back with like laser magic, and I'm like, what the fudge? <laughs> I do love this series. Just complete like willingness to just be like yeah these level fives are incredibly overpowered what are you going to do about it (laughs) which does lead me to the second half because that was in the first half of the episode they had that big fight and they killed off a major character and then the second half of the episode still needed to be done like that was only like half of it yeah which i feel like so yeah in that instance i don't know i felt like you can do fast pacing like that episode is an example of good fast pacing, but y- you can do it with m- and make it interesting. Like I think the very first episode of Battle Royale was too fast because they just were like, "Oh, there's here's all these organizations," and then they just go straight into the fighting, which I thought the the fighting was cool. But if they had explained the organizations more, that would have been better, I think. Yeah, that's why I really get annoyed online where people are like, Index 3 is bad because it's too fast and they should have given it more episodes. And I'm like, more episodes would have helped, but like, it's not just because it was fast. It was because of this, this, and that, and the directing and the screen composition that we talked earlier. You know, yeah. which it's so it's a lot more of a nuanced conversation other than Index Three has bad pacing. Because you can do fast pacing with and make it good, like in that episode. I'm trying to think of a specific example in anime, but uh, I can't. So never mind. <laughs> okay. But like in the second half of that episode, that was uh, one of my like favorite parts of the series, where Accelerator was fighting that other level five, and it was he had like this crazy like it was just a matter of like he thought he was super powered overpowered because he had like these wings and he could have control dark matter which like he went on this big spiel about how oh it's not a thing that that could theoretically exist or and hasn't been discovered yet no it's literally a matter that does not play by the rules of this universe and i'm like that's awesome yeah and then he flew up into the sky and made like the sun's rays like start burning accelerator alive and i'm like (laughs) that's great that was like that was a weird moment because like up until that point where like he like kicked uriharu like on the ground and that was like kind of weird pace that was like it was a weird pacing because like he just kind of kicked her and started antagonizing her without any big spiel and then all of a sudden we have like this interesting camera angle of him like rising up into the air and start like lasering beams on accelerator (laughs) yeah that was pretty amazing Oh yeah, that's awesome. And then Alex Seller starts fighting back with the tornadoes. What the, were the tornadoes in season one or two? I feel like that's a new thing. I wrote that down in my notes. 
The tornadoes were season two, so like. Oh remember... no 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 no! Yeah yeah no! You're right you're right you're right you're right right! I'm an idiot. Because at yeah. the very at the very end of season two, when he punched that guy into space, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> remember those good old times? He did grow <laughs> wings, but like he started yeah. like you just using the tornado wings as like weapons, and he started hucking them at a uh, dark matter. Yeah. And then Accelerator's like, oh, yeah, uh, I've been secretly protecting all these civilians the whole time, and also I've been analyzing, and I'm, like, you thought you had the advantage because you have, like, this insane ability, but actually I'm just, I'm Accelerator and I'm awesome. Yeah. Even though he's battery-powered, he's still awesome. <laughs> he's battery-powered. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, the fudge. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was, also the song was really effing cool. Like, uh, I think exactly, yeah. I forget it, but I definitely was, like, it still had good aspects. Like, if it had a low, bad budget, what are you doing? Oh, you linked to the fight. Yeah. <laughs> put it in the show notes. We're, we're having show notes, by the way, in the description. We'll put, we'll put that there <laughs> if you need a refresher. Anyway, but yeah, it was definitely, like, people are like, oh, low budget. And I'm like, well, you know what? Like, if it had a low budget, would it have all these new songs? Because it did reuse a lot of songs from Index 1 and 2, but it had a lot of, like, new, cool songs, like that one. Yeah. And then Also, the... the rematch fight had a good song. What rematch fight? The Toma Accelerator rematch. Oh, yeah, that was, one of, that was another one of my favorite parts of the series. Cause, yeah, cause, that was like, probably my favorite part of the series. Because they weren't even, like, interacting a whole lot before then, but then Toma's like, hey... Well, I want to I want to help you on your little journey, so I'm gonna punch you in the face <laughs> like I did all those years ago. <laughs> and by years, yeah. I mean probably months. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. probably months. Yeah, I had a, like a like... index timeline in my head at one point, but I've completely lost it. But I think index <laughs> one happened like in the summer, and then like index two like happened like during like winter because it was like snowing, and so I think this like takes place like in the springish. So almost a year, okay. I want to say. But, but that was definitely a cool fight, and I also like the like the random fight between a uh, Misaka Worst. <laughs> Remember her? Yeah, yeah. Like she just jumps that out was... of a plane. She's like, "Hi, I'm a I'm another I'm another Misaka clone, and uh, I'm super powered to try to stop you." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh <laughs> goddamn!" Like, Accelerator did have a really cool like arc in this series. Yeah, I, I definitely think Accelerator, like if. If all else, if all parts of the series of the show were bad, Accelerator was good. I'm not saying that it all was bad, but I'm saying like if there's one thing that shined, it was definitely Accelerator. Yeah, because like he was already kind of going through this like at the uh, middle point of Index One, where like he was like he had like this main ambition in life, where he was like gonna be level six and kill all the Misaka clones, and then Toma like punched him in the face and made him reconsider, and then he. Uh, met a cute lolly Misaka, and he's like, oh, maybe maybe I shouldn't be a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. And then in this season, he was kind of, like, struggling with the fact of, like, oh, do I want to be a super overpowered bad guy that uh, is super powerful, or do I want to be someone who protects people? And he was, and he did definitely struggle with that, and that was, like, the culmination of Misaka Wars coming in and, like, wanting to kill him, and he was gonna kill her, but he's like, oh, wait, no, I've changed. I've changed. You're not getting me on that one. And then he... Then he was still, like, having these, like, turmoils, and then Toma punched him in the face, and Excel was like, fine, I'll be a good guy. Yeah, and then he turned into an angel. He turned into an angel. Everyone turned into angels at the end. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not 100% sure why. Again, not 100% sure why a lot of things happened in that third season, but everyone yeah, was just I don't know. angels. I was, hopefully that'll be explained in the New Testament. Yeah, or just read the light novels a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I mean, if we really want to know, but, uh, yeah, but my theory of New Testament being back to original quality, and then hopefully they'll explain it there when they have more time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what's another cool thing of Excel? Oh, yeah, his, his cane. His cane was actually one of the cool, cooler things on the animation point, because, like, you just see him, like, he's had this issue where, like, he goes to fight someone, and then they, like, dis they do, like, AMT, ATM, like, diffusion fields or whatever the fudge. And then they, like, can just turn off his powers because he needs, to, like, a battery pack or something. Ah, yeah. Right, because I think ATM. the... ATM. <laughs> ATM fields. So, <laughs> so, and then the guy at the end of Index 2, like, utilized that to, like, almost beat him. And then, so you see, like, during parts of Index 3 where he's, like, kind of, like, twink tinkering with, like, a weird cane. And they don't even, like, acknowledge that. They don't, like, say, 
why he's doing that. They kind of just play it in the background while something else is happening. And that's a, like a cool like directing thing as being which made me which leads me to believe that like they're not just bad directors or bad there's not untalented people working on this. It seems like it's talented people working on this under strict circumstances. Yeah. Cuz they do do cool things where like Accelerator like you see him working on his like fixing a cane or something, but he doesn't never like directly acknowledges it like there's like another conversation happening while he's fixing the cane and then later like the atm diffusion field happens and then the cane like comes stands up and he's like oh yeah i fixed the cane to diffuse your diffusion field so i don't have this problem was that in the second season that was that was the that was the third season where like he made the cane hmm. the second season I, was okay. the guy who diffused his a his uh, atm field <laughs> I like how we just call okay. it. Is it is it ATM field or is that? I think it's AIM. AIM field. Yeah. But like uh, in the third season, he makes his cane, and then it like, and then it like comes into play where like he can diffuse the diffusion and then work as normal. I'm like that was cool. Okay. I must not remember that. <laughs> it, again, it was really it was it was more of a subtle thing. Like you, I'm don't blame you for missing it i'm not saying like oh wow you're such a you're such a stupid watcher you can't even notice the um it's because it is like was a subtle thing that happened it was he was just doing it kind of in the background of another scene and then it came up once and then not again it was like okay. he solved that problem it's like okay moving on <laughs> you know? the plot needs him to have powers at all times <laughs> Well, it was well. I think it was just trying to show off the fact that Accelerator's like he's super powerful, but like he's also kind of a genius because how his power works is he has to do a bunch of calculations in the back of his head at all times. So it's implied that he's kind of a punk, but he's also kind of like a super genius. Yeah. So it wouldn't make sense that he would see this issue and then come up with a solution to it. Mm, yeah. I still like Accelerator's original outfit with the black shirt and the white lines, but his new outfit's cool with his like headgear and his white shirt and his cane <laughs> yeah i mean i like how his black outfit is when he was super powerful and, not, and the white outfit is when, when he, he got destroyed by toma yeah it's kind of cool do, do, do. i like i don't know what subs you watched but there was one point in one of the subs where he literally called himself a punk ass vil villain <laughs> Uh, I think I remember that. I think that, I think <laughs> I was looking at like the different subs because we both watched the sub because the dub does exist, but we haven't watched it. Yeah. Because we both watched it like somewhat as it was airing. Right. But uh, yeah, all the subs looked they to just be stealing from Crunchyroll because that's what happens with fan subs nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> they all just steal nice. from official things, and I'm like, okay, whatever you do, man. <laughs> all right, whatever. But I don't. I didn't know what to think of that because, like, I don't know. I just kind of found it annoying that he just kept calling himself a villain. Yeah, I mean, and it then, did come off as like kind of cringy, but I think that was kind of the point of like but how, yeah. that he's does it, that he kind of doesn't know what he's not talking about either. <laughs> yeah, and plus Toma is also very cringy. <laughs> well, that's that's kind of his, his whole speed. But yeah, that's kind of the point. Uh, speaking of Toma, one of the worst things that, that I don't know, I, dig, I don't know if you noticed, but like the Imagine Breaker sound is different. Ooh, yeah. Before it like used to be like before it used to be like a gr glass breaking sound, like a ch for whenever yeah. it activated, but now it's like a chew. Yeah. Like, what the fudge? Why did you change that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they changed that. If the Blu-rays only change that one noise and nothing else, I'll buy them. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need, man. I like the grass glass crushing. I remember Yeah, same. Back in the day before Index Two came out and the season and the uh like the trailer, the teaser trailer for Index Two came out and it had the glass breaking noise and I'm like, Oh hell yeah <laughs> Ever since then I'm just like I like the glass breaking noise and they took it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a car is driving by you. <laughs> 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 I mean, again, the pettiest of petty complaints, but God damn yeah. it, it matters. You don't understand. Yeah, I, I, it does kind of matter. I don't know. But uh, do also, be right back for commercial breaks. I gotta go walk my dog. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. That's not the commercial break noise. <laughs> 
Okay. The two things uh, I put in the show notes was uh, the scene. No, fine. We'll come back. You ready for to come back? Okay. Is your audio still working? Yes, I just checked. Hopefully, it still is. Anyway, I yeah, hope you. Good. I hope y'all enjoyed those Sprite commercials. The delicious, nutritious <laughs> feeling <laughs> of Sprite down your throat. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Why haven't I been sponsored yet? Anyway. <laughs> In the show notes, I <laughs> added the uh, picture of the, the. I found I found a picture of the scene of Accelerator fixing his cane. It was like at the beginning of episode fifteen, where he was like on the phone with Last Order, and Last Order was talking about some random nonsense, and he was fixing his cane. Ah, uh, okay. And then I also linked the song, which is in the in the OST called Black versus White, which is great. I also forgot that aspect yeah. of that, where he had like white wings, and Accelerator had black wings. But then, yeah. But then he's dark matter and Accelerator's white. How crazy is that? Dude, you think they were, like, doing something? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> they, they, they might have been, but it was probably just because, oh, I don't know, it looks cool, why not? Yeah. Uh, so you want to, let's just go through all the story arcs and uh, one, through, one by one and just say what we thought about them real fast, because it is broken up into story arcs. Yeah. So Sounds the, good. So there was like, uh, where did they go? Wait, what the fuck? Okay, so the first uh, thing was like the beginning of, like, wo- the beginnings of World War Three. Your audio is still going, right? Yes. Okay, I <laughs> I'm crazy. Don't worry about me. The beginnings of World War Three, and I wasn't gonna, and I was no, I was gonna say specifically about this arc, but this arc, this whole season made me realize the whole like the whole like tagline of Index up to this point. Has had always has always been and continues to be, uh, when science and magic cross paths. And I'm like, I don't. It, it before it didn't quite like realize to me like how why that is important, but it wasn't until like this season where I'm like, oh okay, so like science are like things that can be measured. Cause like before I always thought that like the magic that all like the people on the magic side had and the magic that the espers have are like similar. But I think the key distinction is that the Esper's powers can be defined and, like, measured and, like, explained by science. Like, Accelerator has, like, crazy magic powers, but, like, they can be like, okay, it's because he's doing all these fractions in his heads and he's doing, like, calculations to, like, reflect, reflect them, you know? Yeah. It was AIM. Yeah, I think that's it. It was AIM Jammer, by the way. I also looked up while okay. you were gone. <laughs> Not ATM. We were <laughs> okay. close. <laughs> Close, almost a, an atomic teller machine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so science is the part that can be explained, that can be measured, that can be valued. Uh, while magic is kind of like related to like religion, where there it doesn't ex- it doesn't provably exist, but like it, it just kind of happens. Like they have all these magic, like all, all the people on the magic side are always like nuns or whatever. That's why index index is from there as well. Right. And it was yeah. when they, the, when these two things started fighting and I'm like, Oh, this is an allegory for the real world where people from religions and people who believe in science, like cross paths and like have a lot of like de- de- disputes to put it lightly. <laughs> Okay. And it was this season. I'm like, oh, okay, now I get it. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that's what they were going for, but certainly that's a that's an interesting thing. There was some dialogue, like the very like one of the first episodes that kind of like made me like realize the whole point of World War Three is that the science and magic sides are fighting because Academy City is trying to go to other parts of the world and like take control and like show them the way of science or something i'm not 100 yeah, percent sure but academy city was allying with the with the magic side too though with the english i think yeah again it was it's very complicated and the show's uh pacing did not uh make it very easy but in the the very first arc they went somewhere where did they go i think italy or france yeah somewhere there and that was that was uh i like, actually liked that as an introductory arc because it was very, it was very classic index where like uh, they it begins with like kind of a slice of life thing and then they go off and then they learn about this dark backstory and then they end it with fighting a crazy villain. That was like, I think that was like the perfect way to open the season. 
Yeah, I think so, but at the same time, there wasn't anything super interesting about it. Uh, I thought I thought the the fight with the spoon guy. Remember the guy that looked like he was like a giant spoon. The green guy. Yeah, the green guy that looked like he was a okay. spoon. Like his power was cool because like he could nullify any attack as long as he identified it as like a threat, and he was like, okay, it can't exist anymore. Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. And then, okay. And so that, like, that's a very good example of why I like Index. It's, like, a very overpowered ability, but it has a fatal flaw that they have to use, like, logic and, like, make a strategy around. Like, Toma, like, hid, like, one of the, like, things that he was uh, going to use to attack. Like, yeah, I think he, like, I forget exactly what it was, but he definitely, like, diverted. Like, he, like, threw up, like, some salt or something to, like, blind him, and then he, like, hit him. So, like, he couldn't identify the thing that was about to hit him in the face as a threat. See, yeah, so doesn't that mean that... Ma- so even though magic is just kind of like a an obscure term, it still has reasoning to it, though. Yeah, the whole thing it's I was talking like about like earlier, like, for the sake of, like, writing, it there, there is a reason that, like, it has to have, like, rules and laws and how to beat it, right? Yeah. But, like, I think thematically, like, that's what they were going for with the two different sides of science and magic. Possibly. Uh, the season also this uh, this arc, the first arc, also introduced reintroduced Itsua, which was just known as the Towel Girl from Index Two. <laughs> yeah. And then she had like a major like role. I don't know if she had a major role. She was mostly like a fan service character. <laughs> She's just kind of like a sidekick, I guess. I liked her as a fan service character. Don't worry about it. <laughs> also on the Wikipedia, it has like dates of all these arcs too. So this. So the first arc said it starts in October, so maybe I'm crazy saying it, saying it was spring. Yeah, I don't, okay. And then there was Battle Royale, which we did, we we already talked about how like the last the ending was really good, but like leading up to it, it was like way too fast. Yeah. Like, but it, again, I think the partially by design. Yeah. Because cause it was supposed to be like a battle royale where everyone is just like fighting and it's hectic and crazy everywhere. So, you know. And then there's like a bunch of no-name characters that pop up, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, that is But I would have I would have liked to know a bit more about the backstory. That is kind of That's it. I... That is kind of like the give and take where like, well, uh you I like having just characters. I like having characters to that appear that imply that the lore of Index is a lot deeper than it appears to be. So, like, this character shows up, and they, like, turned into, like, string or whatever. They, I think they died. <laughs> and they, like, had this huge, like, implied backstory with this other guy, but they never actually explained that backstory. It was just kind of like, whoa, that's, that, there's something, there's something going on over there, okay? Like, we might find out about it later, but for the moment, like, you know, like, which is cool, but, like, on the other hand, like, I would like to know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think so. But yeah, the, the overall the battle royale was uh, fine, and then I found it I found it confusing how at the first arc didn't Tsuchi Mikado kill the old lady and then she is alive now. I didn't uh, understand. Oh that. yeah, the old lady at the beginning. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> and then somebody else tried to kill her, but they failed. Oh yeah, and they... then she comes back later. Yeah, she was like in the battle royale arc, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's just like <laughs> if they do, if a character does not die on screen, then they are and get a dramatic musical track, then they do they are not dead for real. Okay. <laughs> spoilers. So you don't die in real life. Spoilers for every show, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just anyway. The next arc was uh, Aqua of the Black arc, which was actually the worst arc. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, that was not a good one. It was cool that they. I thought- it was a cool it that was they cool like. cool how the. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you. Okay. No, you. No, you. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was cool. It, I mean, I thought it was cool how they brought the saint lady back. I don't remember her name. Mm-hmm. But she just. It was kind of underwhelming at yeah. the same time. Like, they brought a lot of characters back, but they didn't really, like. They just kind of, it was definitely one of those, like, arcs where, like, people just show up, things happen, and then the story's over, you know? Like, oh, yeah. Also, 
Yeah, because she like is Hannah. cool. She's uh, she's like one of the best characters from like Index One, and like she's just implied to be super cool. And then like we don't necessarily see. And then that. in Index Two, she does laundry. And in Index Two, she does laundry. <laughs> I think I, th- I think going back to like talking about the weird pacing issues of the show. I think the show Index Three specifically does a lot of sh- saying and not showing. Like it says that she's like super powerful. It says this this thing this thing. There's a lot of expedition exposition that doesn't really like need to exist. Like they could just show her being cool and powerful. Yeah. Which might be a problem with that with the light novels in general. Because I remember Index uh, One and Two also kind of having this issue. Yeah, but I feel like it's partially... I felt like this show might have needed more exposition, because just, like, no explanations Not for really a lot of the things. more exposition, better exposition, because that's another thing with people, like, yeah. it's too fast. And I'm like, well, a lot of, it wastes a lot of time, too, with details that aren't really that necessary. Because it's like, okay, if they, they couldn't adapt the entirety of the light novel, so, like, let's just... They and the, but they tried to, but they what they should, but I'm not gonna say how they should have done their job, but like I feel like what would have been better if they just picked apart like, okay, this is vital detail, this is vital detail, this is vital information, let's just do that, and like if you really care about the extended lore, then go read the books. Because <laughs> yeah. at this point, like if you want to understand what's going on anyway, you need to read the books anyway. Yeah. But uh, that that I did like that arc for having like the whole like underground like hot spring area like, again as I said before Academy City is one of my favorite parts of Index so like they went to like this cool like underground level of Academy City that was like this huge like separate city in and of itself and it like had like cool skylights and like this whole like unique atmosphere and like the uh like they had like onsens and it was really cool. Yeah, that was interesting. But then they just. I don't know. They, I don't know. It just felt like it wasn't explained. It just, it didn't feel significant. And then uh, at the end, yeah, again, it just didn't feel like significant. And then at the end, another example of this was uh, Misaka's like whole character arc Uh throughout this series, which wasn't, she didn't do anything. What Misaka arc? (laughs) Like... Like, she shows up here, and she's like, oh, I want to, I want, she, her whole, like, all of her dialogue is just basically her struggling with the fact of, like, she wants to help him. (laughs) Like, I think. he doesn't want her help. (laughs) Like, she keeps saying, like, I want to become your power, like, in the, I forget what the subtitles were, but, like, in the Japanese version, she said something to the effect of, I want to become your power, which is basically, like, I want to help you, I want to be your ally, I want to be, I want to help you, you know, and, like. I, and then Thomas I was like there would be some yeah go yeah, ahead no, it's we still have all of new testament don't worry about it dude yeah but i was hoping there'd be some cool thing with her in the world war three arc but the she was just flying on a plane yeah she was just kind of flying on a plane she was like being she i think she helped like people escape as it was blowing up but i don't think she really did much of anything i think it was, there was like no action scenes with misika it was more like symbolic that she showed up because she was willing to help but she didn't actually help because even in yeah. the scene that I'm talking about where she shows up where Toma's, like, beaten and, like, almost dead. And Misuka's like, no, you shouldn't go out there. Let me help. And he's like, no, I have to do this by myself. And then he did. <laughs> you know, he just, like, I don't need, like, I got to do this. Destroyed. My... Yeah. Yeah. Why does there even need to be a railgun? A then... railgun show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is the she issue. Because anything. there's a lot of, like, spinoffs of, like, with Misuka and Accelerator. But, like, a lot of the issue with that is that most of their character development happens in Index, not in the other shows. Yeah, but, yeah, I think that's what's going to be the problem with the Accelerator show. Is like, there's so much character development that occurs in Index. It's like, what's there left for the show? Yeah, no, I mean, you could do that. Like, uh, treat it as, like, backstory and then move on from there. But, like, yeah, it is difficult. Yeah. I think I read online that... In the current um, volume of the Accelerator manga, Accelerator's just not there, and he hasn't been there for the past year or something. <laughs> I don't know how it goes, man. He's <laughs> off doing Index Three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, the fudging Royal Family arc was cool because, like, the character that was basically Saber from Fate State Night is cool. She was like a. <laughs> I feel like it's just it's just it's just that character type. I feel like there's I've seen too many sabers. Where I'm like I could easily see this being a a character in Fate Grand Order. 
even though uh, this came out before like the huge like the light novels of this came out before the huge fate craze but like she she was like she was blonde she had a like royal background and uh she had a sword <laughs> but she That's also had need. a sassy attitude which is something the original saber didn't have so we'll give her we'll give her that unique <laughs> unique oh, quality God. But I did like, but I did like that. I did kind of like that arc. I'm not uh, gonna lie. There were some parts where I'm like, eh, who cares? But there were some, that, but like especially at the beginning where they were just like they took selfies with all like the royal family and whatnot, <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah. and me on the selfie, and I'm like, oh, this is this is prime index silliness right here, man, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember much about this arc to be honest. I think there was like a revolution. Yeah, it was like the beginning of like world war three where like they were trying to like make allies and whatnot it's weird because like every villain in index becomes the an ally later yeah 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 and then... like the first arc you've got style and then the purple lady <laughs> and then they become allies and then at some point you've got accelerator he becomes good does he though and then well i mean he's accelerator but i don't know it's just it's it's kind of cool but it's also kind of predictable yeah but like i do like how like all the like previous friends like come back in this arc <laughs> or like in this season that was a cool there's just random fan service there's like people coming back and should doing things yeah like i think in this arc specifically like, i'm just like skipping around and seeing like what happened and like the lady from like that was like the villain of like the first arc of the second season the lady with the the tube top <laughs> And the weird magic things, she comes back. And I'm like, okay. Oh, her, yeah. But she's cool. As a as a long time index fan, she's cool. Oh yeah, I think this wasn't this where like a uh, Fiamma. Is that how you pronounce his name? Like the main villain of the last arc. Fiamma. With the, with the other hand. Fiamma. Yeah, I this, think so. I think this is the arc that ends with him grabbing index and running. <laughs> yeah. And then I believe so. And then Toma's like, "Okay, I'm I'm gonna go to Russia." And then the next arc is Accelerator basically doing the same thing, where getting a, getting getting a reason to go to Russia. Yeah, and I think it takes place at the same time. Yeah, the Dragon arc. And then uh, the World War Three arc wasn't bad. I th I like it. I yeah, I thought I definitely think it's the highlight of the of the season. It has the opening. The opening uh, uh this should go without saying, but the openings are great. Yeah. Like they like everything else, like everything considered, like the openings are definitely like on the iconic quality that the index one and two openings are on. You know what I mean, dog? Yeah, I agree. These are definitely good. Openings are especially the second one. Openings are hard to talk about, but uh it's just cool, man. It's just like a F. Just watch it. Just look it up. I'll put it in the <laughs> show notes. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely like the idea of them going off to uh, Russia and like do participating in this big war. But like a lot of a lot of things just kind of happen, you know. A lot of like things show up, and some places are cool. Like we talked about uh, the fight, the rematch between Toma and Accelerator, and the Accelerator versus Misika Wars. Like that was cool. Hmm. And I did like uh, Toma versus like the uh, Fima, which is called Fima from now on. Fiama. Fiama, like he yeah. he's a cool idea for a villain because he he's overpowered like all the other villains, but he also has like a lot of political power. Like they were trying to like find out how to storm his base, you know, because he had like had a base and he had like. Like, the idea was that they were going to defeat him and end the war. Like, that's how, like, p that's the position that he was in. And I kind of like that idea. Yeah. But then... And, and I kind of liked how this arc... I don't know. It, this arc wasn't too big on story development. I guess it kind of was. But it was a lot of sort of war games. Yeah. And it's like, oh, Accelerator has to ally with Misika Wurst to storm the base. Yeah, definitely. There was some story. There was a, there was definitely a need of like explaining of like exactly what was going on because a lot of things were complicated. And you're like, oh, okay, I guess Accelerator and Misika Worst are teaming up now. Okay, <laughs> I don't yeah. know why, but okay, this is happening. But... Also, if you watch this arc week by week, there's a lot of epis. There's, I don't. It just felt like nothing happened because you're following three protagonists. 
So oh, it's like yeah. one third, one third of the things that happen in a normal episode <laughs> happens in this episode. It feels like. Yeah, I was gonna talk but, about Hamazura yeah. and how useless he is because he has a lot of screen time. The the blonde guy who's like the just the normal yeah. like the normal guy. Which yeah, is, which I kind of. Is... Other than his battles with Mugino, and then like at the last episode where he killed that one dude, <laughs> that, those were his cool moments. But other than that, it was just. But he like had a... like a lot of screen time. Like he went, he was like trying to help his like girlfriend not die from like uh like using the ability crystals, and like he went to like this village and like he made friends with the locals, and he was like supposed to be like the local hero, and I'm like. He's like, isn't that Toma's job? I mean, I know Toma. Toma is always advertised as like the normal high school boy in the weird, magical, uh, sciency world of Index, even though he's not because he has a magical arm and can do things nobody else can. But yeah, I guess Hamazur is the actual normal guy. Yeah, like the writer realized halfway through where he's like, wait, hold on, I still want a character that's just the average Joe, but Toma is no longer the average Joe. <laughs> Yeah. I do feel like, like Toma kind of, like, flopped in this season. I mean, he was never that interesting of a character. Yeah, I definitely did not like... I think he was p one of the weakest parts of the season. But again, he was never, like, the main focus of, like, any of the... of Index. I mean, he's the main character, yeah. but he's just a facilitator. He's a good... he's a good protagonist. He's, he's, he's good at just showing, like how ev the world around him affects him, you know? He's kind of like a deus ex machina. He just makes things happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think he's just like the typical, like, shonen protagonist where he's like, as long as he, like, believes in himself and believes in his friends, like, he can do it. And I, I do I do think <laughs> that it's interesting. His character is, is boring but in interesting because all the other characters are more interesting around him. So yeah. they show up to Toma and he's like, what the hell are you? This normal-ass anime character in this weird-ass anime. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they sum every all the magic like people and the science people trust this normal guy to do everything for them. Yeah, I and mean, I mean, he he's boring, but he's interesting because he's boring. Where Hamazura <laughs> is just boring. He doesn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, he... But I I thought it was cool, like, when he, he threatened that one guy and killed him. I thought that was pretty cool. In the uh, last that episode. A, yeah, that was that was in World War Three. Uh... But, and, that, and again, the last episode was, like, kind of crazy in its level of, like, production. Like, because I felt like... I'm, I'm, I feel guilty just saying the production quality went up, but, like, I do feel like there was a shift. Like, as soon as I started the last episode, I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Things are moving. <laughs> and so Accelerator had that moment. Was that in the penultimate episode or the last episode that Accelerator had made a song and turned into an angel? I think it was the last one. But, like, but I'm not sure. You know, if, if that last episode gives me hope. Oh, no. Second to last one, he turned into an angel. Yeah. But that last ep that. I still have hope, especially with that last episode, that, like, there are talented people working on this, which is why I wasn't trying to be too mean to the series composition writers. <laughs> but, uh, I do think that these, that the people working on this show are talented, but, like, they just weren't given enough, like, time or resources or something. I don't know, man. I don't know. But, uh... Also, the show, the show is called A Certain Magical Index. But Index is not... I mean, she's an interesting character, but she's just kind of Fs off for the entire show. She got kidnapped, like, near the end, like, which was, like, a... a I, say, I know, but she doesn't do anything. I don't think she ever does anything, but, yeah, she's most... She, again, like, are you like people like to give Index crap for, like, saying, like, oh, the two main characters are the most boring characters, but I'm like, again, that's kind of, like, what makes them interesting is that they're, you know, like interacting in this weird world yeah the world is definitely more interesting yeah than toma and index their boringness kind of like breaks up like a lot of like what would otherwise be the monotony of just like the d g gritty dark and underbelly of academy city when they can just like kind of f off and do like a random like fan service or like just a slice of life episode yeah which railgun does a lot more anyway is there anything you uh wanted to say because this has been going on for like an hour. Mm. Yeah. Um. I don't know if I need to say anything that hasn't already been said. Yeah, I just... I think that uh, this show... I mean, 
I think it's. I want to say. I want to say that it's like well. It, it's better that we got this than nothing. It's better than nothing. <laughs> you know? It's like mighty number nine. <laughs> yeah, you know, don't complain. You know, you got, you wanted this here, have it. And I'm like, you not got like it. This. <laughs> but it, it just seemed it is unfortunate that like Index Three turned out the way that it did. It could, it could have been a lot better. But like, I don't know. I will say that the arcs in Index Three, other than the World War Three arc were not that interesting of arcs anyway so maybe it's like your theory that they're just preparing for new testament yeah maybe i mean so. that could be it that there could be okay it could be a lot of other things but there's a lot of like parts of the show that are like oh something like the fight between accelerator and uh dark matter was like great <laughs> you know and i'm like okay well if they can still pull out stuff like that then i'm like well if they if they just put if they're given like if whatever is the issue gets fixed, which seems like a fixable issue with all these things that we talked about, either like the boring arcs in general or uh, the having not enough time or production or staff or whatever, those, those are all fixable problems. So I feel confident that like when and if there's a index New Testament anime, which there probably will be, I'm hoping. I'm 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 hopeful probably. that it will exist and it will be good. It'll probably be like three more seasons though, right? there's a lot of arcs yeah it's been going on for like a while <laughs> but anyway uh and i'm sure the uh other stuff will be good like accelerator uh, the, what i've seen of of a certain scientific accelerator looks good and uh hopefully railgun will be good yeah but we'll probably we'll, we, we, we we may or may not do a discussion podcast when those happen we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see because i do want to i do want to do more because uh the dragon maid and this one i think turned out pretty good too it, this one was definitely a lot different than the Dragon Maid because the Dragon Maid was all was like four of us just talking about how much we love this show, <laughs> and this one was like kind of like a more one on one. Just two of us. Yeah, this one was like <laughs> it was different, but like it was more of like a one in one conversation with like the nuances of like what is the problem with the show and what what are the like the differences, you know? Yeah. It was a lot, it was a more and... of a nuanced conversation for a more new show that we felt more mixed about. Yeah, you know it's we don't want to shit on the show, but we, the only criticisms we have for the show is because we like it and we want it to continue. Yeah, and be good later. Because if we really hated the show that much, we'd be like, ah, fuck the show, and then post it on like 4chan and then move on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I still like Index. I'm I'm not I'm not off the Index train, dude. I'm I'm getting on. You know, I'm. It was the return of Index was a little rocky, but I'm I'm still on it, dude. We're all still on it. Yep. So uh, yeah. So that that's that's the end. Check me out on everything. I don't think Yish has anything. Do you have anything you want to show? Um, follow me on Twitch, so I will stream every two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he deleted Twitch.tv slash Yish underscore. And all of my stuff is in the doobly doo, so uh, do that. <laughs> In the YouTube description, in case you downloaded this randomly and then don't know where it came from, <laughs> I don't know how you do that. I only, I'm only planning on putting the download link in the YouTube video. The doobly doo. But anyway, yeah. So, uh, see y'all next time. Say bye. Later. Bye.